we are now going to head straight to one of the fundamental points of the debate, the question of whether more sex is always a good thing. And to kick us off on this, I'm going to ask Yuran to help us out to answer that one. Is more sex always a good thing, Yuran? No, obviously not. Certainly not at an individual level. I mean, uh, it, it depends what motivates the sex. It depends on whom the sex is with. Uh, it depends on, 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 on the context in which one is alive. Just, uh, 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 you know, a lot of, um, a lot of sex with, uh, with strangers just for the pure physical physicality of it, a lot of sex without intimacy, a lot of sex uh, just for the sake of having it, or as Susanna said, a lot of sex because it's socially required or demanded or expected of you, all of those are, are, clearly, uh, are clearly negatives. Uh, one wonders, though, on a societal basis, if uh, you, know, you can make those kind of conclusions. Uh, independent of everything else going on in the world, I don't know that we can say much about just the numbers regarding sex. What is the optimal level of sex for society uh, for, for large groups. I, I, I think this is something that every individual has to choose. But I do think that when you see a strong movement, particularly among the young, it's an indi indication of something. It's an indication of, 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 of some issues that, that, are, that are happening. And the fact that, that uh, Susanna said, that people are not even looking to date or not looking uh, is a little worrisome. I mean, one of the great, again, one of the great pleasures in life is relationships. And if, if it's so horrible to go out there and, and try to establish relationships, then maybe there's some issues in our culture that need to be thought about and need to be addressed. What are your thoughts on that one, Liara? Is more sex always a good thing? Um, I'm, I'm absolutely not a believer in absolutes. <laughs> um, however, you know, I, I think... It, it's up to each individual person's preference. I think if someone wants to be totally asexual and live as a monk in the mountains, and that is what makes them happy, they should go and do that. Um, I personally, uh, sorry, you're on. I love a good anonymous romp in the hay. I got to say, there's something particularly fun and exciting about that. And um, I don't think it has to be uh necessarily a lack of intimacy if it's someone you don't know there can be something um especially beautiful about that kind of connection where it's very fleeting but um very intense um but yeah i think i think people should really try to get in tune with what they want and what makes them happy and i think people um some people aren't starting to do more of that. I actually think, you know, people gender and exploring their sexuality is so healthy because um, it really lets you um, just get in touch with, with what you want. Um, I do think that uh, there can be a lot of online discourse though that can get really toxic um, where people um, will shame someone for having different preferences than them. And um, there's this uh, sense of righteousness from people who have different preferences. Like you should only have sex within a marriage or like sex is evil and bad and you should only do it to make babies or um, you should have like sex all the time and be a total slut because that's the, that's the best way to be. I think um, I strongly believe. I hear you next life. <laughs> Um, and, and so what about, do you have any concerns about the younger generation who might be having less sex? I mean, do you have any sense of why that might be the case? Do you think at this point that having less sex is just a question of personal preference? Or do you have any concerns that it might be linked to um, kind of underlying shifts in uh, I mean, Yuran kind of touched on it, didn't you? The idea that maybe like our wider culture, whether it's social media or other elements, might be shifting the way that we even think about sex and who we want to engage in sex with. I think social media is such a big factor that, um, you know, I, um, you know, I have younger siblings who, um, you know, they will... Uh, there's just so, so much pressure, especially with platforms like Snapchat, um, where you can screenshot everything. 
Um, I think, you know, it used to be you could phone up a pretty girl and say, hey, you know, do you want to go on a date with me? Um, and if she says no, there's not necessarily a record of that. Or if you ask her out in person, like she can go and tell her friends and maybe talk shit about you. Um, but you don't hear that either. But now it's like you send her a text message. You're like, hey, do you want to get dinner? I think you're cute. And she screenshots it and sends it to her group chat with all of her friends and she's like oh my god like how weird and creepy I hate this guy he's so annoying and then one of them sends you a screenshot of the group chat and then all of a sudden you see all these people talking shit about you and you feel terrible and you're like okay I can never ask another girl out again um and I think it leads to this sort of neuroticism about like I think talking shit about people is fine I think Asking people out, even if you're not totally sure if they like you is fine, but having all of that shoved in your face is just not healthy. Um, I don't think everyone needs to know everything that everyone is saying about them. Thank you. Um, Susanna, can I turn to you for this uh, initial question? And it, what, what's your take on the more sex issue? Is more sex always a good thing? Do you think that the, uh, the reduction we're seeing in the figures is, is a sign of a, a wider problem or is it just a shift in personal tastes? I think that, um, as you said, research um, shows generally that it's not about how much sex people are having, but why they're having the sex. So if couples are told to have more sex, if they're doing it because they're told to, um, that doesn't lead to greater happiness. If somebody is wanting more sex and they're not getting it, that could lead to a decrease in happiness. If they are um, having sex reluctantly, then that could be a negative thing. So it really depends. Um, I think that having what you were saying about the younger generation is interesting because I remember in high school, like going home and chatting with people on AOL Instant Messenger, like people I went to school with. And I feel like, um, you know, that has probably increased just that people are connecting digitally more than physically. I've worked with people as a coach who um, felt awkward in sexual and romantic interactions and felt more comfortable online. So that could be a part of it, that people maybe um, are less practiced in how to have in-person interactions, especially like during the pandemic. Um, and maybe people are less comfortable with that. And that could be a negative uh, reason why people may be having less sex. So let's talk a little bit about the underlying reasons for this. I mean, we've touched on social media briefly. Uh, I, and I know that porn is often brought into this conversation. It was one of the factors. Um, so although we know that attitudes to sex are changing, what do, what does the panel attribute those changes to? Um, you know, some people would say that actually porn dating apps are supposed to encourage people to have more sex. Are they actually having the opposite effect? Are they ruining sex for people when they should or, in, or are meant to or sold to us is, is actually improving it? Liara, do you want to kick us off on that one? Um, I would be happy to, yeah. I think... Um... I think it's really unfortunate that people use porn as a source of sex education, um, as a performer. Um, it's pure fantasy, you know, we're shooting these scenes and um, it's, you know, often two hours for a short five minute clip. Um, so there's a lot that's cut out that you don't see. Um, I think this country really needs proper sex education and not just about the pure mechanics of it, um, but about pleasure, um, because that's not something that people should be getting from porn, period. Um, I do think that other people from diverse uh, viewpoints making more porn would be great, too. So much of it is, you know, kind of the same stuff. And I get, you know, it's what certain people are into, but. Um, I think there could stand to be more diversity in porn. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas 
a AI TV 